Not having a big crowd here, are we? Never mind. No, it kind of. But you can speak into the microphone. Yeah. Hello. Um, it'll project outwards and you can. So we, so we just audience. turn it up really loud and so we can. Yeah. Speak, close, speak, close, speak fairly close to the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's uh, one o'clock and. Uh, Most people will be like nearly, nearly kissing the microphone. Nearly kissing. Hello, everybody. It's uh, nearly one o'clock and um, uh, we're going to talk about Greenpeace and its programs this year, Project Climate Vote. Everyone's welcome to come up and listen and. Uh, Nice to see you come in, come in, everybody. Welcome to come and listen uh, to this talk. You're welcome to sit down. Please, please, come in. Everyone's welcome. <laughs> oh, look, people are flocking. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's, I, I put it all, I've unplugged this one. Come along and sit down. You're all welcome. Yes. Um, Hello, come in. Please sit down. Yeah, I think you're too far away from the microphone. Okay, I'm going to be right close to the microphone. And that's too, too close to the microphone. No, 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 it's not too close to the microphone. Okay, okay. Lovely. All right. Okay, smashing. Thanks. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I'm Debbie, a Greenpeace volunteer from the Brighton Greenpeace. And uh, Greenpeace have got thousands of volunteers all around the country. We're very thrilled to be here at this festival and to be on the uh, stall along from here. I don't know if you've seen it at all. Uh, and I've got my lovely companions Daisy and Nisha with me and indeed uh, Corinne as well. And uh, just thank you for this opportunity to uh, explain to everybody what's happening. Now I'm sure all of you have heard of Greenpeace, yes, I hope so. And um, it's amazing what has happened uh, over the time since Greenpeace started in 1971, when the first intrepid little boat of people went out to try and stop nuclear testing in Alaska. They went out from Canada and it was a very risky thing that they did. And indeed many of the uh, Greenpeace things are risky, but it's basically a peaceful operation. Greenpeace always protects in a peaceful manner. And uh, so uh, we've had many, many things over the years which have been hugely successful in terms of campaigns. In fact, we've been campaigning against nuclear power, actually, against microplastics. And more recently, we've had the wonderful uh, sort of ocean, uh, sort of marine park treaty, uh, sort of which is in process now, where 30% of the world's oceans will actually be protected by treaty. We're trying to get as many countries no, to it's... sign up to that as possible, uh, and that is a slow process, but it is actually happening. So we're very thrilled. We're very thrilled. I'm not sure if it's working though, Corinne. It's, it's coming out of this one, not that one. Okay, so no, feedback, okay. Um, so um, we're very thrilled that uh, the Ocean Treaty is one of our latest campaigns, and even this year, our campaign uh, against deep sea mining has been successful. Uh, Greenpeace had been throwing down boulders to stop Greenpeace mining, uh, and they were taken to the High Court, so uh, that's to stop trawler fishing. Uh, but in fact, we're successful in court, and that was a fantastic project, and very good. Uh, so, you know, there's been numerous things that Greenpeace have done all around the world, and I'm very proud to be involved with Greenpeace. And I feel that all the projects that we've ever done have been really worthwhile and successful, so it's been a great thing to, to be part of that, and it's important to the trees. Uh, but this year, our program and our focus is on the election and what politicians are doing to fix climate change. And uh, we feel there's going to be a change in this country, and we feel that so it's almost like a war now, a climate war. We're really having climate effects all over the world. Climate impacts on everybody. It impacts on more immigration, more illegal immigration. It impacts on house prices and energy prices. It impacts on every aspect of your life. And uh, in fact, in this country, we're luckier than most not to be suffering the same degree of floods or heat as other countries. And we're extremely privileged. We probably don't know the half of what people are suffering all around the world. And many people are even losing their homes now because of climate change. And so we are in a war. Now, in the olden days, if there was a war, you know, they would, they would have an army out to deal with it. <laughs> but, there's no government apparently creating any kind of army at all to deal with climate issues. In fact, they tend to put it on the back burner. 
and yet it is probably the single biggest issue affecting us today. And we have the chance to hold politicians and political parties to account to do more. This election which is coming up is in fact the way that we can go to the parties, in fact we've been to all the parties, and put pressure on them to deal with climate issues first. And we do ask that people, um, when they are voting, actually choose the candidates in their constituencies who have the best climate platform. And so, so we have been campaigning all around the country now, certainly for the last, since the beginning of the year, campaigning and knocking on doors, talking with everybody and asking them if they are going to vote with climate issues in mind. And perhaps I could just have a little show of hands in the audience here. Are you, when you're voting, going to think about climate issues and vote accordingly? Oh wow, everyone's putting their hand up. And that's what we find when we're door knocking. 75% of the people we talk to are definitely having climate issues in mind when they uh, are you know, picking their candidate. So uh, we have a, a Project Climate Vote campaign. We're asking people to put posters in their windows. There are some posters behind, held by my lovely assistants, Daisy and Misha. And we're actually asking them to sign up to our Project Climate Vote campaign, uh, where in fact, uh, we and Greenpeace are ranking the parties and the candidates in constituencies and sending you a sort of a, a list of that ranking so that you can make a more informed choice in your constituency about the climate platform of the candidates that you have. We're also looking at some tactical issues as well where there are some marginal seats and so that will probably, uh, not all the candidates are declared yet because obviously Richie had completely uh, sort of unfooted everybody, they weren't ready. Uh, when he had such a snap uh, election call but even he probably didn't know that a hundred of his MPs would be stepping down they haven't even got conservative um, candidates in some of those constituencies that's how fast it was uh, so candidates can still declare up until the 7th of june and then then our rankings will come out because otherwise they would be incomplete and so uh, you will if you sign up to our project climate vote um, be on our special database for that purpose so that we know which constituency you're in, because uh, we would take your name, your email or mobile number and your postcode. And it's just for the purpose of this particular campaign. And uh, so therefore we will send you uh, information relating to your own constituency. And uh, obviously you're welcome to tell all your friends, put posters in your cars and actually just show that you care about climate and you want politicians to fix the climate. And we want politicians of all parties because we're apolitical and not a, we're a neutral organization Greenpeace uh, we want them all to realize that people really care hugely about this and so when they see posters when they see things in cars and when you talk to them on the doorstep they will know and in fact in Sadiq Khan's um, election recently they were shocked some of his canvases were shocked to meet with people with these posters in their windows and to hear that climate issues were a big priority for those people that were going around in London door knocking in Sadiq's, um, you know, the, the, the London mayoral election. So they have actually reported that back to Labour HQ. I think Labour are probably backtracking a bit on their thoughts and, and speeches. And of course they had their 28 billion um, promise before. I think we'll see some more pledges coming out during the course of this campaign because most the major parties seem to be revealing candidate inner projects pretty well as we as you know the days pass by so uh, anyway if you're interested you're welcome to take a poster from here you're welcome to put uh, a sign up either on the qr code on a little poster or indeed uh, daisy and uh, nisha will actually also sign you up to our project kind of vote campaign and we are campaigning vigorously now obviously until the election on the 4th of july and this is because climate is the number one issue and the election has the biggest impact on it and who is in power has the biggest impact on it and um, it's so important for all of our futures and if you think well no my main concern is cost of living or something like that actually cost of living of course is impacted by climate and if you think oh no my number one priority is something else maybe it is probably it's still impacted by climate issues and the pricing of it is impacted by climate issues so uh, I think we, no one can deny that this is the case. So uh, I think we're proud 
there's at least a thousand volunteers out doing this type of campaigning right now all around the country. We're here in Claire's Small World Festival in Kent, but there are people out all around the country right now doing this every day, every weekend, up until the general election. So you will see us, if you see us on stands or something, you can toot and, and support. And uh, we're very grateful to have your support as well. Nice to see a crowd of people at the back. I don't know if anyone's got any questions actually at all. Um, I'm curious, how have you got this going so very quickly? Um, well, we have been working on it for a good six months. So, okay, so you've anticipated? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We know there's an election coming up. Yeah. Greenpeace HQ actually thought, wait a minute, how how will we deal with this? You know. So, of course, Greenpeace have got lots of local so groups. Had a, yeah, so you've we had, uh, I'd say, from the Brighton group. So, we were out doing some campaigning early on, and each of us were asked to find a team a team of volunteers to actually come and support us in our campaigning and so I started off right with a team of two that was me and my sister uh, and I was thinking oh my god you know I'm not where am I going to find people to do some campaigning with now I'm very blessed to have a team of people 26 people on my team who all joined we've had such an increase in numbers in Greenpeace volunteers because of this campaign but in Brighton we you know we've got 40 plus members now we never had that before so a lot of people are truly attracted to doing this project and believe in the cause and now we have like four joint group coordinators in Brighton because we've got so many members you know we have to manage all the different things that we're doing because we do all, all of our other campaigns as well so that's what we're doing so nothing coming out I hope it can be um, that's because he's turned wonderfully can you hear me at the back there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, could you hear me before? Have you missed anything? I could do email. I'm going to try and keep it close. You can tell I was never a pop star or anything. Oh, let You can tell I was never a pop star or performer before. Sorry. So, um, but I've done a lot of public speaking, but not directly into a microphone like this. So anyway, so we've been very blessed in Brighton to actually have a much bigger group. And in fact, many other groups as well uh, have really grown in number and also in terms of volunteers. So uh, I do actually suggest you go and chat with Daisy and uh, Nisha. And uh, uh, I don't know if anyone else has got any particular questions. The question over here. I'm going to do some work on the economy. So you're going to do some work on it. Are we? Well, of course, Greenpeace have got a whole load of people who do political analysis, economic analysis, scientific analysis. We will actually fact check what people are saying. For example, if uh, if Sadiq Khan says that the uh, you know air quality is improved by X amount, we're just checking whether his you know air measuring stations are actually in bus zones or in a normal zone. For example, we are fact checking. And we have an independent view on all the scientific findings and all the other findings. And in terms of economics, for sure, we have a political team. I'm sure they're looking at that. I don't know how much detail they go into. But certainly Greenpeace have a lot of fact-checking going on. So what's your question really breaking to on that economics then? <coughs> but, well, some, some are arguing for years that the economy uh, is probably the biggest factor. The biggest factor, so the, the, the question is, isn't the economy the biggest factor to all the ills that we are facing? The point is, climate change is affecting the economy in an adverse way. If you actually fix climate change, um, actually it should be a benefit. And to actually invest in renewables, for example, can cause huge amounts of new investment, new employment and all those good things, new skills that people can actually engage in and rather than for example supporting fossil fuel industry which is you know of the past and or indeed protecting them as indeed many governments tend to do rather than actually moving forward so uh, I would say that the economy of course is affected by climate change but it's not a quick fix this is the problem it's not a quick fix if it was something that could be fixed tomorrow then that would be great but it hasn't been fixed tomorrow but if you work on it step by step it will come and it's only by campaigns like this that actually movement occurs and people start to think wait a minute and if we as organized people rather than organized capital or money because that's something we don't have 
if we are organised as people, we can always cause change, and that's exactly what we want to do. So uh, that's exactly what I would actually say. It's true. Organised people, yay! Absolutely, yes. So um, that's exactly what this project is trying to do as well, galvanise people together. Because we've got tens of thousands of people signed up to our project, Climate Vote Database, already. Uh, the government knows how many we've got signed up. They also know how many in each constituency. We can actually go to prospective parliamentary candidates and say, you know what, we've got a thousand or two thousand or whatever the number is in your constituency. What are you going to say to them about climate change? And even though some government, you know, the press is, I think, trying to downplay this, this campaign. You know, there's going to be a big march in London on the 22nd of June. That's going to be massive. It will be very interesting to see if that gets good press coverage or no press coverage because they don't want to know about this type of thing but we're saying pay attention do it and i think they will so, uh, um, you, have, you have before you a parliamentary candidates and the ppc for southampton oh are you the ppc for southampton oh wow okay nice so to and see i'll you. Be, uh, yeah i will be campaigning on specifically the impact of the economy and, and all of the all of the acid, I think the climate change is only one of those, it's ocean acidification, all the other stuff, biodiversity, all that. Because I, mean, I, would, I would urge Greenpeace to take a far closer look at the GDP okay. and growth, because it's yes, growth of the economy equals extraction from the planet. Well, I'm not sure I agree with you there because growth can actually cause, you know, come from intellectual um, brilliance, shall we say. And uh, so I wouldn't say it's always just from extraction or denuding the planet. I actually think people can have brilliant ideas, for example, carbon recapture and other things that actually put back into the planet. And let me tell you, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, certain things can be done, but I mean, like, the point is until we keep, well, we keep looking at things. But what I would say, I mean, I was very blessed to live in uh, Hong Kong and China for 25 years. And I can honestly say that uh, the way that, for example, a rice paddy works is actually neutrifying the ground rather than denuding the ground. The way that we farm, for example, could be so much better in, in many Western countries. Uh, but, uh, you know, those, that's a topic for another day. There are ways of living which actually improve the planet rather than denuding the planet, but we don't choose to go that way for a whole variety of reasons. So I take your point about GDP and all those good things, and certainly I hope that Greenpeace, and I'll, I'll suggest it to them uh, later, I hope Greenpeace will put some of that into their um, materials uh, for this campaign. Well, the absolute obsession, I agree with the money obsession, which is because this is a capitalist society and Britain depends on the FTSE and all those good things for their pension funds and all those things, which I don't necessarily agree with myself. But, you know, this is kind of going slightly off track here. Uh, but I think it's the principle of trying to improve our environment trying to increase our biodiversity, which is definitely a Greenpeace thing, and just trying to make things better for people on the ground, and they can do it themselves. If you can mobilize an army for a war, if you can keep everyone at home for months on lockdown, if you can change society's behavior so radically, just by being government, you can actually mobilize an army of people to go and be more accountable for the way that they live and how they treat the planet. Of course you can. The question is, how quickly are we going to do it? Because it is coming, whether you like it or not, it's going to be forced upon you. But what I would say is that, that actually you think in an accountable way about how you use this planet's resources. And before you are compelled to do it, you should be doing it, you know. And um, I was quite shocked, actually, one of our campaigners the other day, she goes, I'm visiting this drive, and this person's got two 7 Series BMWs on their drive, but they've signed up as a project climate voter, and I said, oh, well, that's good, you know, that is good, like, but how about walking the walk, not just talking the talk? She said, yes, she goes, I did say to him, so when you renew your cars, are you going to research, you know, electric vehicles and uh, more uh, suitable transport mode going forward? Just to put the seed in his mind that actually, you know, maybe there's a more efficient way of transporting himself 
than his you know, 2 7 Series BMW. So I thought, well, good on you, because I'm not sure I would have gone that far when I was campaigning, because I'm just asking you know, people if they'll sign up to our database. But, but it means, if you sign up as a climate voter, it means you are walking the walk. You are not just talking the talk, and that's absolutely the truth. So it's coming, whether you want it or not. You're going to have to start to be more efficient in your own lifestyle and so is everybody and we have to put our planet back together we really do so um, i think i'm probably way over time i was only speaking for 15 minutes but lovely questions thank you um so i don't know if anyone wants to take a poster wants to sign up you're all very welcome and we're over in the uh, tent along here which is uh, a lot of people in that tent but you'll find us with our banner here for project climate so Yes, we know MP Watch, yeah, and we do work with MP Watch. MP MP Watch absolutely, yes, too. yes, we do. We're we're actually in alliance with all yeah. friends of the earth, yeah, yeah. you name it. Sort of all of the, the sort of green, uh, zero hour, all of them. If they combined all of our databases together, we would have millions of people. But we're not allowed to do that because of political rules. So uh, we have our separate databases, but that's absolutely fine. So thank you very much. I was just going to say we have someone on at two, but it's nowhere near two. Have, There's another um, person have speaking. Another person? Yeah. This oh, lady here. Really That's okay. No, thank you very much. I hope I didn't go too long. Sorry about that. So, thank you. It's funny. I feel like I recognise and know you. I'm not sure why. You look very similar to someone else. Anyway, it's awesome. <laughs> very much. My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was an hour ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 